Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. Today we are about to get cutthroat with my single eyeshadows. So in terms of the collection, I have two palettes, one MAC 1, one Z palette that are made up of singly bought eyeshadows and then this beautiful box. I think it's my favourite packaging I've ever had. Um, so this is my beautiful Dior Celestial box that also contains my other single eyeshadows. Now in addition to this I do have crayon eyeshadows but I keep them on a separate tab in my inventory so this is what comes under single eyeshadows on my inventory. I have basically realised over the past few years I have got less and less experimental with my eyeshadow. I do wear greens or I wear like a brown, a gold, a neutral very much safe eyeshadows and I think actually I don't think there's going to be too many bright colours here. I think I've actually done an alright job over the past few years of getting rid of those colours that I wasn't wearing anymore. However, what I think I've got left now is probably still too big a collection of a lot of safe colours. I feel like it could definitely get cut down a little bit. If I had less of it, it could get stored differently in a way that might make it more accessible because I think the storage is also an issue currently for me. I'm a very visual person. If I don't see things, I don't reach for them and this is at the back of a shelf. So I'm not I'm not reaching into these so I think they need to get moved but I think that will be easier if there are less of them. So yeah, let's uh, without further ado just get into it and try and get rid of some of these eyeshadows. According to my spreadsheet I have 67 single eyeshadows so that's our starting number, we'll see where we end up. These three eyeshadows are Nylon, Woodwinked and Amber Lights and I have swatched these here. Now Nylon I really like, it's got that real reflective through it. Um, which I think makes it really brightening at like the inner corner because that's the age that I am. Uh, Woodwinked I think is really really pretty. Amber Lights I feel like that's that kind of warm shade that was super in fashion not too long ago but if I'm honest I don't know how much I would reach for that now so I think that is our first declutter. So what I've done here is I've taken the insert out of the MAC palette so I've moved the declutter one here to the edge and I think then what I'll do is I'll go through the Z palette and then Whatever ones I'm decluttering will all go in one palette and I'll keep one palette of singles at the end. This is all a mix and match of loads of different brands, different shades. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to start swatching and see what we can... Although, actually, I know straight away this one... Oh, this one is Dawn from an ABH palette. Can't even remember what palette now. But this actually really irritated my eyes the last time I used it. I actually meant to declutter it, but I've never gotten around to taking it off the spreadsheet. So this can go straight away. Then I have two other ABHs here, which I think I'm going to keep both of. is Primavera and whatever the other one was. These were both from the Modern Renaissance palette and they're the two shimmery shades. As you can see, I've got a massive pan in Primavera. So that one swatched there. It's such a pretty gold shade. And then this one's more cool toned. It's obviously, again, I've got a pan in it. So you can see that I've liked those ones. So that's a pinkier one if I was doing more of a cool tone shimmer. That's the kind of shades I actually wear. Is I'd wear, you know, something like that over the lid. And then a little bit of a matte brown through the crease. Maybe a bit of something like nylon in the inner corner. That's very much my high look and I don't particularly stray from it so those two can stay. Speaking of matte browns I've got I think this is Naked and Buck from the original Naked palette so I've just swatched them both there they actually both seem to be swatching okay uh, they are pretty old in my collection but I feel like they're making it through this first pass. I have got this shade here I think this might have been an Urban Decay one I'm going to swatch that. I am cleaning my fingers in between these swatches by the way Oh, that's lovely. That's ridiculous. I actually didn't know how lovely that was. I was going to say if that came up really close to Primavera, I might have gotten rid of one, but I think for now I'll keep both. Or will I actually get rid of Primavera, which is not something I thought I'd be doing. But I feel, although Primavera is maybe more of a shimmery wash, and that's maybe a bit more intense, so I'll keep both for now. In fact, there's one I've forgotten. Let me grab it. So this is from Jones Road. It's in the shade Chic. So let me swatch that. Just the sort of shade that you would put on to put down a base. But I've also kept this one here for that same purpose. So let me swatch the two next to each other. So I don't know if you can really see. Chic is like definitely a little bit more, more cool toned and more pigmented. That's the Marc Jacobs one there. There's not really much going on with that. So I think I'm going to get rid of the Marc Jacobs one because I've got that one 
to stand as that single eyeshadow now. There is part of me that's swithering because this one fits in the magnetic palette which is maybe better for travelling but overall I think I would always reach for chic over that one so we'll keep that and get rid of this. The next section I want to look at is this top section here, these five shadows. They are all lovely, I feel like I'm going to like them all swatched but I feel like they're quite similar so I want to swatch them all next to each other so I will do them in order so this that one didn't want to stick there. This one first. I think I actually just swatched that over the Marc Jacobs one because there was so little going on there. Oh, that's gorgeous and it's kind of got a greeny undertone which I always like. Then next to that I'll do this one. Oh, also gorgeous. Kind of more of a silvery undertone. Let's go into this one here. Yeah, I feel like that's going to be really similar to that one. Oh! or not. Although is that ridiculous? Is that one of those ones that they're not exactly the same on the arm but would they look really similar on the eyes? Very possibly. Let's do this shade here. I think these two were out of a NARS palette. That's a Huda Beauty. I think that was an old Cat 1D one. Not quite. I think that might have been Marc Jacobs actually as well. So let's do you. Oh that's beautiful as well. And see that that's like bronze without being the way that amber lights is that really really warm way that's like a warmer bronze but not quite as as orange as that oh my arm's looking good i really like all of them um not not doing great here let's do the huda one okay i'm gonna be honest lads i thought i'd be decluttering at least one from here but i really like all of them so Unfortunately, they're all going to stay. Okay, I've cleaned my arm off, so let's swatch these shades. First of all, we'll do this one. I got this in Bloomingdale's, but I can't actually remember the the name or anything like that. I mean, such a beautiful shade, but again, I just think that's probably a bit too warm for it. I'll swatch. I put the, the ones I'm getting rid of at the bottom here, so let me swatch Amber Lights next to that. Yeah, they're definitely in that sort of super warm family that was all the rage for a while but I just I don't think I would reach for something like that now so I'm going to get rid of this one even though I remember buying it in Bloomingdale's with Lauren and Lindsay and it was such a nice memory but I'm just not reaching for that kind of shade anymore I think we can just say I'll get rid of this one for all that's left of that let's just let's just say that one can go which leaves, and oh, that's quite a pretty looking little quad, isn't it? Anyway, so this is Colourpop Team Captain. I really like this shade, so I don't think I'll be decluttering it. Then this is Colourpop. I think these are so bright, they're kind of throwing the the light out. But yeah, Colourpop Tea Garden, really, really pretty one. Then Snake Eyes here, again from Colourpop, absolutely gorgeous. Gorgeous shade, love that one so much. This one here is Makeup Geek Envy. Oh, I love that as well. And then last but not least, this one, which I think was another Cap Von D one. Oh my god, look at that colour. Yeah, I love that too. I think the only other one I might declutter is Team Captain. Just when I'm looking at it there, it's not swatching particularly well. Um, let me have another go at it. Just Like, it's, it's coming up all right in my fingers. It's just not... Um, Oh, well, that's better, actually. Mm, I think, unfortunately, I'm keeping all of them, so let's go have a look at that. So, so far, these are my keeps. So I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, plus 18 for the Jones Road one. And then I'm getting rid of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, do you know what? Actually, that's maybe about a quarter. That's not too bad. If I had reduced this by a quarter by the end of it, I will be really happy. I think as well the thing with these, some of these were bought individually, which obviously all my single eyeshadows are bought individually, but some of these are actually just really standout shades that I have saved from palettes that I've decluttered. So probably everything that's in these kind of palettes is like something I really, really like. So maybe that wasn't the most successful sort of. Let's get into the box. I'm going to start off with this one. This brand was called Love the Planet. This is a kind of greeny shade so I'm going to swatch that next to these. So I have just swatched that and they actually look really different on camera but I feel like in real life this one is not a million miles from this one and I think I would always reach for a packed eyeshadow over a loose eyeshadow. 
so I'm going to get rid of this one and I think probably in the same vein without even swatching it I'm going to get rid of the other one that I've got from Love the Planet as well this was such a beautiful like medium brown neutral I really really did like it but yeah I just very rarely want the faff of a loose eyeshadow so I'm going to just get rid of that one as well and I actually think while I'm here I've got these two from Bella Pierre Cosmetics. This one is the shade Stage. This one is the shade Coco. Now, I think I'd probably reach for these over the other ones because these are at least in a pot. But again, they are, although they're really, really pretty. So this is Coco. This is Stage. They are very pretty. I think for now I'm going to keep Coco, but I think I'm going to get rid of Stage. I have got four shades here that I'm just going to get rid of. I started swatching them here. These are all kind of loose glitters. And the problem is, as soon as I start swatching them, I think they are so pretty. Like, I mean, they really, really are. They're those sort of glitters that move in the light. But these are all loose and dry. You need to use a glitter glue with them, pack them on, take your time. And as soon as I start swatching them, I want to keep them and I convince myself I'll use them and I think they're so, so pretty. But I, hand on heart, cannot actually remember ever using any of these. And I feel like I know that and I think about getting rid of them and then I swatch them and they're really pretty and I want to keep them. But I am just, I'm just not reaching for them and I don't think I'm going to start reaching for them. All four of these are going to go, so that's Lime Crime one and then three Cryolan glitters. I think that's all my loose eyeshadows. So from there I've only kept an additional one, but we've gotten rid of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in addition to the first five. So that's actually, that's been quite good. I will try and pull out all my goldy shades next. Let's do it that way. That wasn't all my loose shades actually. When I started searching for gold, I remembered about these. These are like little pots of sequins. They are both by Burberry, so I've got them in gold and black. And I know I said I wouldn't use like the small fine glitters, but these I really like for like a Christmas party, full on sort of David Bowie-esque new romantic glamour um, so I'm definitely keeping both of them and then on to the golds I've got three kind of proper golds I would say one from Shantikai, one from Christian Dior, one from Kiko and then this is kind of getting more into a pewter from Pat McGrath uh, so let's watch the four of these so starting off with Kiko then next to that I will do Christian Dior mirror Next to that I will put Chantecai Soleil. This is so beautiful. This is like much, much warmer than either of the other two so far. And it's got that sort of dual chrome shift and I love it so dearly. That's definitely staying. And then lastly, I'll do the Pat McGrath Mercury pigment. So as I say, this is really shifting more into sort of beauty silver than gold. Oh, gorgeous. Look how well that's washed. I actually like all four of these, which is annoying. Let me go back to that single shadows palette that we've saved so far. Let's do, I think, did we say this was the Marc Jacobs one? I think that's probably quite similar to the Pat McGrath. Oh no, they're, they're actually quite different. Okay, so both of them could stay theoretically. Scare told this palette up in case they all fall out. Um, I'll do this Kat Von D one here. Let's consider that in the mix. Okay, different again I would say. Then I think these two are the real tests. So Primavera, let's do Primavera. And then this one that we think is an Urban Decay one. They are all falling. Okay, so Urban Decay and Primavera and then that's Kat Von D and Marc Jacobs. I think all four of these totally different. The Urban Decay one's just that little bit warmer and more intense, so I think I'll keep that. The Kiko one, I think, is slightly different. I think between Primavera and the Dior one, I think they're quite similar for that, you know, that really sort of subtle wash of colour. But I think Primavera is actually a little bit smoother in terms of the swatch, so I'm going to get rid of the Dior one and keep the rest. I have just pulled this from Colourpop actually, this is the shade Run Wild, I should have probably looked at this in with the other golds, so let's do that first. I think that's kind of different to any of the others on the arm actually, so I'm going to keep Colourpop Run Wild. Next up I've got these four which are sort of a range from proper silver down at Chanel Phantasme here through to the sort of iridescent, you know, tone shifting sort of shades. So I'm going to swatch the four of them and consider them all together. 
So first up, let's look at Chanel Fantasme. That's such a pretty shade. I really, really like that one. And it's like quite sort of blinding, cool white silver. So I really like that. Let's swatch all four before we make decisions, but leaning towards keeping that for now. Next up is MAC Cooler Than Being Cool, which I really, really like as well. That's got more of a purple shift in it than the, the Chanel one. Really, really pretty. Next to that, I will do Kat Von D or KVD Beauty Thundershock. This has been panned, repressed, etc. It is so lovely. This one's almost more of a gold um, sort of flip within it. Really, really like that. It is quite fragile is the only thing because it has been repressed. But I do really, really like that. In fact, let me grab... MAC Nylon and swatch it here because that's maybe more compatible to these so let me go back to that. Mm, that's It's actually a much more stark white MAC Nylon. So to go back to the original four that we were supposed to be looking at, the last one is this Pat McGrath one. This is the shade Astral White Pigment. Oh, look at that. I feel, I feel like all four of them could stay. I feel like they all kind of would tone with different looks which is maybe a little ridiculous but yeah, I think I'm keeping all of these. Oh, I wanted to be so cutthroat. Next up, I've got these sort of warmer shades. So I have got Chanel Rouge Brulee, Kat Von D, Dosey, or Dose, don't know which, Colourpop Basic Instinct, and Kat Von D Raw Power. So let's swatch the four of them. So we have got Chanel Rouge Brulee, Kat Von D, either Dose or Do I don't know if it's like Dosey Do, like, you know what I mean? Um, or if it's Dose, not really sure. That is that one there. Colourpop Basic Instinct, which I really like, so I'm sure this one will not be going anywhere. And last of all, Kat Von D Raw Power. So I feel looking at these four, this one's got that kind of burgundy shade to it. I really like that kind of colour, like I'm very attracted to it, but I'm not sure that it's the most flattering on my super pale skin. I feel like it can leave me looking... A little bloodshot so I think I'm going to get rid of that one. Definitely keeping the colour pop. I really like this. I don't know if it's a bit warm for what I would reach for now but I do really like it. I think I'm going to get rid of this Chanel one. So these two are going. I think I'm going to keep these two but I'm going to... No, I am. I'm going to keep those two. So keeping these two, getting rid of these two. The next four I'm going to look at, I've got two sort of cooler toned browns here. Another brown that's not quite as warm as the first four that we looked at, but it's still kind of warmer than these two. And then this, which is a sort of iridescent um, colour. It's been in multiple project pans, and I probably will be holding on to this because I would like to just actually pan this completely at some point. But let's watch the four of these. I don't think any of these will be going, but never say never. So first of all here, we have Dior Reflection. Well, that's quite hard panned, actually. Oh no, it's still still performing nicely. Still swatching. So that is Dior Reflection. Next up I have Chanel Mirage. This was like my favourite eyeshadow for the longest time. They discontinued it. I bought like one of the last ones that the shop had before it was being discontinued. That is that one there. I think these are kind of losing their pigment, these Chanel pot eyeshadows. I have a few of them and I really like them. I was pretty obsessed, I used to kind of collect them. I've whittled it down to what you've seen so far in this video really. And the Phantasme one, the silver one, is really really keeping its pigment. But I feel like this one's just a little bit paler and not as kind of pigmented as it used to be. And I feel like for this kind of shade now I've got so many that I've kept in that single eyeshadow palette that would do the same job as this on the eyes that I think, I didn't think I'd be seeing this, but I think I'm going to declutter Chanel Mirage. Also, by the way, this is like a little blood clot that I have under the skin. I don't know how I did it, um, but it's not like a mark that I'm just not wiping off. It is, it's under the skin. I'm just going to need to wait for it to go. Um, so, sorry if that's been annoying you all video. Uh, but yeah, we're getting rid of Chanel Mirage in a move that I absolutely did not see coming. Next up, I have Colourpop Free Rain. I really like this. I really like that, like the three single shadows I have from that Colourpop, whatever the collection was called, Go Wild or something. So that is Free Rain, which I really like. So I'm definitely keeping that. That's actually quite similar to that. 
I think I might get rid of the Dior one. I think free range swatching better. That one's kind of hard panned. So again, another unexpected one, but I think I'm going to get rid of the Dior and keep the ColourPop. And then last but not least, and not really technically in this colour family, but we're swatching it this way, is number seven, Seashell. I should have probably swatched this in with the iridescency shades, actually. That would have made a lot more sense, but anyway. So yeah, there's not much of this left, and I think probably as a shadow on its own, I would actually declutter this. But for how much is left, I want to finish that. I have put so much work into using that up to get it to that. So I want this finished at some point. Maybe this year's 12 pans of Christmas. Possibly. I don't know. But I want to actually say that I finished this. I don't want to just get rid of it when it's down to this much product left. So holding on to this for now. Hoping to finish it and get it out of my collection that way. So unexpected, but two are going, two are staying. So let's add the two going. I think if I could get rid of 20, I feel like that would be a nice number. So let's count. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 17 that I've gotten rid of so far. Well, actually, that's really good. If I get 67 to start with, if I get rid of 17, it's taken it down to 50. So I was about to say, actually, if I come under 50, I'll be happy. So I'm on 50. This is what we've got left to go through. So if I get rid of one more, I get it to under 50, which I'll actually be very, very pleased with. If I could get rid of 20 all in, though, I feel like that would be quite a significant number. Anyway, let's go on to what shall we do next? Um, well, we do the dark ones. So these two are blue. This is Estee Lauder Midnight Star. This was my first ever Pat McGrath that I shadow back when she used to do like the set. So I've got that dark blue one. Then that came in the same set from Pat McGrath, it's a black, and then Chanel Mirifique, which I was obsessed with for a while and I'm really hoping hasn't kind of lost its pigment the way that I felt the Brulee one and the Mirage one have done, but let's swatch them and find out. This is Pat McGrath Ultraviolet Blue. I just swatched that over that shell one. Hmm. Oh. This is my problem. I swatch that and I think it's beautiful. I don't think it necessarily suits me. Do you know what I mean? Like, on my face, I don't think that works in harmony with my features. But when I swatch that, I think that is one of the most beautiful colours I have ever seen. I think it's gorgeous. It swatches so well. But I never reach for it because I don't think the actual colour is very flattering to my complexion. So I think I need to let this one go. It's hard because it's beautiful. It's just not right for me. Next up, I've got Estee Lauder Midnight Star. I couldn't tell you the last time I used this, if I'm honest, but it is very pretty. And although it's blue because it's such a black blue, it's not, you know, the same kind of bright blue that this one is. Let me swatch the other two and we'll see what happens. The Pat McGrath Dark Matter Pigment. Oh, that's very black. And last but hopefully not least is Chanel Mirifique. Oh, look at that. Like that I love. This not so much, which is really sad. Although maybe this like over, over the Pat McGrath one. Mm -hmm. That over the Pat McGrath one. Yes, we're in business. I think I'm going to keep these two and I'm going to get rid of this one and this one because I think looking at that next to that, that's just, yeah, so much deeper and inkier because that is black, that is a navy blue. Like, they are different colours and I do appreciate that, but I feel like I would reach for this more than I would reach for that. So I'm going to get rid of the two blues and keep these two. Four at a time seems to be working. So the next four I've got are a kind of grey into a silver into a sort of iridescent silvery lilac spectrum. So let's look at the four of these. First up, I've got Dior Fairy Grey. This was a limited edition one from years ago. Oh, that's really... Do you know the thing about this? I never reach for this because it's grey, as silly as that sounds. But it's, it's not that grey. It's more silvery and sparkly. And I do quite like it. Okay, let's watch the others. This is NARS Dion. I love this shade. I These were from the NARS did this like wet dry collection, which I don't think they do anymore. But the eyeshadows were so 
beautiful that is Dion. In fact, you know what I want to do? I want to just pull out the Pat McGrath sort of putery one and some of the single ones to look at next to this. So I don't know if I need them all, but I do really like them all. So let's look at them next to each other. Here we are back to Pat McGrath Mercury. So let's look at Mercury next to, oh no, totally different actually. Completely off the base there. I'm just going to swatch this Cooler Toned NARS one and the Marc Jacobs one again as well. So there's the NARS, that's a good bit darker actually. And there's the Marc Jacobs. Just to make sure we're not keeping complete dupes. Yeah, no, they're, they're all quite different actually, aren't they? They look more different in the arm actually, I think, than they do on camera, but... Yeah, so I think, I think Dion is good to stay alongside these three. Next up from the same NARS range, I've got Callisto, which is more of a kind of purpley tone through it. So, so pretty. And then last but not least, Urban Decay Midnight Cowboy Rides again, which is, again, super pretty. Again, I've got quite a weakness for these kinds of shades. I like all of them. And I know there's not maybe the biggest difference between them, but I feel like they are all wearable shades that I would use. So I think I'm keeping all four of these from this quad that has turned into some comparison swatches as well. The next set of four are my darker purples. All look very similar in the pan but, but let's swatch them and see how they compare. First of all we have Dior Fever. See I just I love a really deep purple burgundy lip in winter and I feel like these kinds of shades just go so well on the eye with that. So that is Dior Fever. Next up from MAC we have a shade called Nude Model. This was actually like in a free gift or something. Like I didn't pick this shade but I love it so much. Like, oh, just beautiful. What I'm thinking immediately though is that I know that I love this one and I think I would reach for that over the Dior one. So I'm going to get rid of the Dior one and keep the MAC one based on the first two swatches. Next up I have Urban Decay Solstice. This is one of these dual flip ones that, this is the closest as it gets to belonging in a category, but it's kind of on its own at the same time. So yeah, I'm going to keep that one. And last but not least from this category, I just need to show you this packaging. It is my favourite packaging. So this eyeshadow will be going nowhere. The only way I would ever actually get rid of this shadow would be if I repress something else into this packaging. I love it so much. Um, but this is Shantikai Baroque. If it's not Baroque, don't fix it. Little Beauty and the Beast reference for you there. So again, it's kind of, this one's like more textury. This one's also got that kind of dual flip. But yeah, I love all three of these. So I'm going to keep those three and get rid of that Dior one. I have got two left to consider. So I've got Shantikai Rhino and Tobacco Road from RMS Beauty. Those are the last two and then we've gone through them all. So let's get them swatched. So this is Rhino do this down at my, my wrist here. Oh, I love that shade so much. That was a gift from my friend Lauren and it's it's so beautiful. Oh, so it's such a special, I mean, I do think Chantikai eyeshadows are just super, super special. Like they just are that cut above. They are beautiful. So yeah, Chantikai Rhino is going nowhere. And then this is the RMS Beauty line in the shade Tobacco Road, which I do really like, although I couldn't, again, tell you honestly the last time that I reached for it, but I do really like it. Yeah, do you know, actually, I think that would be beautiful through the crease with that on the lid, which is not a combination I've ever done, but I really want to do it after swatching the two, so I'm going to keep a hold of this one as well. Only thing I'm going to adjust here is that I think after looking at my arm for a little while, this Dior Fairy Grey, I think it's really, really pretty. But I think in terms of the look that I would get from it, I would always think to go for Callisto. So I'm going to keep Callisto and I'm going to actually get rid of the Dior Fairy Grey. So at the end of the declutter, these are my keeps and this is what I'm getting rid of. So I'm getting rid of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 
So I thought 20 would be good, 21 I'm really happy with. I definitely need to sort out a new storage solution for these. I'm not reaching for them as much as I should be because we've just watched them. I've just said how much I love them all. I think they're all so pretty. I want to be using them more. Having them in the box at the back of the shelf isn't working. So that does need addressing because I feel like as well I'm just grabbing for my palettes all the time because that's so much simpler. There's usually a like ready-made complete look in a palette but yeah, I'm keeping these because I love them, so I need to start using them. So we need to look at the storage, but that is a whole other video, so that is everything for this one. Thank you so much for watching it, I hope you've enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!